we're going to do a quick review of the Hako FX901. I'm going to give you my first impressions here of this battery operated soldering iron. I've already got, I haven't even turned it on yet, so I don't even know if it works, but I've already got some initial impressions. It has uh, four, or it uses four AA batteries. It's got this battery bank that locks in. I've got four Amazon basic batteries in there. Um, and you slide the batteries in and press this lock button up and it seals it to the, uh, to the battery compartment. It's got this cover that you can remove and an on off switch. That is it. That's the basic soldering iron right there. So I've noticed that this tip, it is replaceable and I'm going to take this casing apart and show you the issue that I'm I'm seeing. And I don't know if this is just mine or uh, all of them, but there is quite a bit of play in this soldering tip. I mean, in all directions, left, right, up and down. It's more, it's got more left and right than it does up and down. But I don't know if you can see that play. So, this is not going to be a soldering iron that you're going to use full time. This is going to be in an emergency if you have to do something quick. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to remove the casing here. So remove the battery bank. And I've already taken the screws out. So let's see if I can get this thing out. I'll show you the guts of the soldering iron. There we go. And this has just got a plastic molding. And here is the guts of the soldering iron. You've got your contacts for your battery. And this is your removable tip and uh, heating element. This pops out. There is not a lot of plastic holding this guy in so I can see why it's so flimsy. But it's just got one, two, three, four, five, five little screws that hold this thing in. And that is about it. It doesn't do a very good job in um, securing that tip. So you're not going to do a lot of high, uh, high capacity soldering with this tip. I mean, I'm pressing it with my fingers and it's still got, you can see all that movement there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the screws back in this thing. We're going to uh, put the battery pack back in it and turn this thing on, fire it up and see how hot it gets. I've got a, where'd it go? I've got a thermal thermometer. There it is. I've got a thermal th thermometer. I don't know if you can see that, 67 degrees. So we're going to see how hot this thing gets after a couple of minutes and take a look. We're going to turn this thing on and just to prove here, it is at 68 degrees, 67 degrees. So here goes nothing. Maybe we'll put a timer in here. I don't know. There it goes. One thing I don't like about this thing is it doesn't set up. You have to lay it on its side. So, oh, it's already getting hot. I already can feel it. Got a little heat. Oh, now I'm starting to smell it. <laughs> oh man, I hope I don't cause a fire. This is going to this will be a good YouTube video if this thing catches on fire though. Might not be good for the uh the area here, but um
So we'll let this go for a little bit and see where we end up. All right, we're about two or three minutes into it, and I'm learning a few things. Um, Got to hold this gun a little bit higher here. I don't know if you can, I don't think you can. Turn the light on. It's out to about 100 and... Two hundred degrees. I mean the <clears throat> my. I'll leave it go a little bit longer, but my home station, obviously that's on AC that heats up to seven hundred and fifty degrees within a matter of a couple minutes. So we're two or three minutes into this so far. I think we'll let it go for a little little longer here um, and see plus I think I'm getting a little back scatter off of the um, I'm sure someone's going to tell me that this is not the way to do this but it's the, about the only way that I can measure temperature versus, and then we're also going to grab some solder here and see if it melts some solder. So stay tuned. All right, it's been heating up for four or five minutes here. Let's see if we can get some, uh, some 0 0.31. Diameter solder. Let's just see if we can get this to, to melt. Nope. Eh, it's balling up. It's not really melting. See that? Nope, it just dropped on the... And this. See how it's balling up here? A little solder on the on the tip. Watch it drip on my hand. So I think you know this is not this is not a very good soldering iron. I would not definitely not make this your main soldering iron. I would use this as a backup. I've got another um, Hako that plugs into the wall that I use for my backup. And, but if you are somewhere where you don't have electricity, um, this would be a good alternative, but just keep in mind that this is going to be used for very lot light soldering. It is the Hako FX901. I will put a an affiliate link down in the description. I get a small kickback for when you buy. And it's got this uh this um uh tip um case that you can put over and I'm not gonna put it over it now but it uh Goes over and uh, slides right um, on top of the uh, on-off switch, so you don't mistakenly uh, turn it on in your bag. But um, yeah, I get a small kickback if you want to buy one. Uh, I forget how much these were, but um, it was relatively cheap. I mean, something that uh, you might want to throw in your go bag just to have it. But um, yeah, that's the my impressions of the 901. Would I buy it again? Um, you know, I don't. I probably would. Um, I don't do a lot of soldering in the field. Um, I don't have, you know, I, if I needed to repair an antenna, usually I 
I bring a second antenna, so repairing an antenna in the field is probably not in the game for me, but you never know when you might need to, to solder something real quick if you only have one antenna. So, anyway, my impression of the 901. Um, thanks for hanging out. Like and subscribe. Catch you later. Thank <laughs> you.